Yeah, Robin Julian handing down that sentence. Judge Michael Urbanski said that James A. Fields Jr. is a profoundly disturbed young man with a history of violence, and he felt that the possibility of him ever being released back into the public was too grave of a risk to take. Fields, for his part, didn't show much reaction to this sentence, and during the day's proceedings, just really sat in his chair, occasionally looking to his right to see who was speaking at the time. Again, this all relates to his 29 federal hate crime charges for what happened on August 12th, 2017. He was in town for a Unite the Right rally, joining other white supremacists protesting the removal of Confederate monuments. And later that day, when he was in his car, he drove it into a crowd of counter-protesters who were in downtown Charlottesville. He injured dozens of people and killed one woman, 32-year-old Heather Heyer. Now, Fields pled guilty to all of these charges in order to avoid the death penalty. His defense team argued for mercy, pointing to his age and pointing out his history of mental illness and childhood trauma. But prosecutors said he deserved the most severe of penalties because he made a conscious decision to do what he did. Now, probably the most powerful and definitely emotional part of all of today was the victim impact statements. Many victims were sitting in the courtroom throughout the day, crying, holding hands, especially when they were showing video of that crash happening. And when it was, when it was their turn to speak, they talked about how that day is still haunting them to this day, whether it be broken bones, broken marriages, lost jobs and wages, or PTSD. Many laughed or scoffed at the idea of mercy, saying that Fields didn't give them any mercy. Now, those victim impact statements were bookended by Heather Heyer's parents. Her father went first, saying that he forgives Fields. Well, afterwards, we spoke with Heyer's mother about what she has done as a civil rights activist since this all happened. The last time I saw my daughter was to identify her body and to sign the papers for her to be cremated. And I held her bruised hand and bruised arm and I said, I'm going to make this count for you. And that's what I've done and I will continue to do. You don't get to knock my child down and silence that voice without 500 more raising up. Um, don't get to do that. For his part, offered an apology in the courtroom, but didn't direct it at any victims or the Hire family. And we spoke with Hire's mother and another victim. They don't accept that apology. They said it wasn't sincere and just a last-ditch effort for leniency. Now, one bit of sentencing was left out today. That was the topic of restitution. The prosecution says victims are still getting in documentation for the judge to figure out how much might be necessary. The judge says he'll make that decision within 90 days. Meanwhile, Fields still faces sentencing for the state case in which he was convicted of first-degree murder. He also faces the life sentence in that case and will be sentenced on July 15th.